So in this video, of course, we are checking out a pretty interesting auto tracking PTZ camera from Reolink. And yes, they did send me the camera for review. Yeah, I've been kind of dragging my feet on it, but there's a good thing because I really had some couple little issues with it on a previous firmware upgrade. And the recent one, as of about the few weeks ago, it just really solved all those issues. So if you do, end up buying this camera please definitely go make sure you do go download the latest firmware upgrade because it makes a massive difference about how well it tracks people in going left and right returning to its point where it's supposed to be etc just works pretty on point and as always we'll leave all the links down for everything down below there are affiliate links and the way those do work there's no additional cost to you but it does help out the channel and we do appreciate it so run down real quick. This is the RLC823. And no, there's not a test at the end of the video to make sure you still remember the various numbers. It can get confusing of things. But it's their new 8 megapixel PTZ power over Ethernet. So you do it one cable, but you can also power it through an external power supply if you like. I think they might have a Wi-Fi one or maybe they are coming out with one. I'm not too sure on that. I'll check on that. If we do find that, I'll leave that down below. I should have guess I should have done my homework first. So I did cover the five megapixel one probably a couple years ago. One big difference you'll see on that one is the bottom head of it is much different this go around. And of course it's that black color. This one does bring two way audio as well. And I was kind of in some ways glad to see that in some ways, some people may not like it where the mic is on board because you're going to hear those motors. And no, there's just, that's the thing. Electrical motors are not silent. So you're going to hear them, especially in that metal housing as it echoes. So it does have also the spotlights, the white spotlights and the infrared. So you're going to get that color night vision. You can turn it on and off, etc. You can turn on the alarm. Pretty cool different features that they have with it. Now I'm showing right now as the recording of this, that is they're showing for like 250. I have seen it on sale, but you just never know with the way prices are so in, in flux these days with inflation and whatnot. So definitely go check out some of the links if you want to see how much they are. This is the Wi-Fi one I'm thinking of, the RLC523. I think it's a five megapixel. And it also has, I believe, that person and vehicle detection, which is key. I will say, especially now in 2022, the cameras that have person and vehicle detection is just going to spoil the hell out of you because it stops that cry wolf syndrome of the bugs passing by and doing all the things. So one thing I did thought it was pretty cool was you could set it up where, especially when you walk by it, it turns on the white lights and then follows you around and then it goes back into that infrared mode. So it's not always blasting that white light out. Now, the only negative I can say, I know they talk about it being a positive, the 5X optical. I wish they would have had, say, a 10 or 12X optical. 
I've done some previous ones of those Amcrest ones that have that 12X, and it's just, I think it's a really good spot for a PTZ to have at least 10 or 12. 5X just, eh, it's, it, it gets zoom a little bit, but just not enough for what you need to do on the optical side. Now, of course, once you do digital, you're just blowing up pixels, and yeah, it just sometimes makes it look like a mess. So some of the nitty gritty specs, you're gonna get that eight megapixel at 25 frames per second. Not the 30, but hey, it's pretty close. We'll give them that. Now it only supports H2.65, but that was one thing I did find with the various upgrades to it, whether it be BI's upgrades with Blue Iris or their upgrades. I haven't had any issue with it dropping out of Blue Iris, which is quite amazing for a real link camera these days. And Maybe you got better on both sides. I don't know. Somebody figured out something and it's been pretty solid in Blue Iris, even with all the PTZ controls. Now you may be asking, well, what all can this support? Like, where can I do integrate this into my system? Well, of course I did talk about Blue Iris, but hey, what about everyone using the hardware NVRs? Yeah, this works with those NVRs. It'll pick them up, it'll pull it in. I'm using it with the eight channel NVR right now and it doesn't have any issues and I have all the controls right in it and it just works. Now, if you're not doing the NVR thing, you can do a micro SD card in it. I did try that out and did test it. It does work fine. That way you can record on board and it kind of has that same NVR thing and you can do some of the playback, which we'll show shortly. Now, one thing, it is meant for a wall style mount. So if you are trying to do an Eve mount, you will need to get an additional accessory. You'll see in my stuff, I did have a little board, but that's my test board that I slide into all my little brackets and stuff for testing various IP cameras. You can see this bracket here it wants to mount to the wall. You can have the wire come down or you can run the wire through the wall. Now, if you want to do mount it, say from an Eve, they do make a bracket for the Eve that would go on top of the camera. It does show it's out of stock. I know previously I have seen it in stock on their AliExpress store, but you can go look around and see if you can find that bracket if you want to mount it from the Eve. Never break the seal. Yep. Yeah. That may apply to drinking. No kids, you'll learn about that later. Of course, this is PoE. Uh, weatherproof boot. Power supply, if you're not going to be doing PoE. And the power supply is UL listed 12 volts, 2 amps. I hear a noise. Like a screw is inside. Didn't plan on doing this. But here we are. Alright. I see a screw from something. What did that come off of? Hmm. I don't see where that screw came from. It looks like one out of there, and they screwed up and dropped it, is what it looks like to me. Always something interesting, and you saw it here. We keep it real. We won't start this video over, because I'm not redoing the boxing, because it's someone else's screw up. If you hear a screw in yours, I guess send it back or take the time to take the four screws out like I did and pull the screw out. So the plug, typical reset, power over Ethernet, this is PoE Plus, I believe on this one as well. And you can power it there and this is a grounding wire. Now they do have a web GUI. If you want to open it up in Chrome and go check out things and change settings, you can do all that. Now, of course, the video quality is not going to be there because they're just using a lower quality substream for going to the browser. It does work with their app. I would recommend using their app, but it has all of the various settings in here. If you want to change everything just straight from the GUI, 
such as all the different resolutions, frame rate, bit rate, the whole nine yards. You can do that from here, the app, or if you're going to do it with the MVR, you can do it there. Or with the mobile app for Android or iOS, you can do it there as well. Pretty much all kinds of options on how you want to do this thing. I do highly recommend to download the RealLink app and you can view it all right here. It's going to be a better quality and it's a little easier to do on your computer. Plus you get all the different controls down here. Pretty simple to do. You can even do the talk and listen. You can get all the PTZ controls and you can move things around. Now, one thing I did find in the past, even with that five megapixel, was the focus was a little too slow from what I found. But one way you could work around that, if you had various set points you'd like to look at, go set your presets and that way it'll just zoom in and focus right there and you start having to mess around and tweaking it. Now, why it just moved back by itself is I have it set for the guard point where once it gets moved for some reason, it's a cool feature. You can make it it'll actually go back to that point in, in case it say it followed somebody across the yard. And then it would after 30 seconds of not seeing them, it would, it would go back to its original location. They call it the guard point. Now, playback, pretty simple stuff. And you can even come in here and I'm, I'm changing this to the high quality. So no one complains that the video quality sucks. You can filter it by the timer, the motion, the person, vehicle, etc. Now, I think I have this one just on the SD card recording, just people. So that's what you're going to see when I toggle it here. It'll jump to just some people that were probably walking by at the time. You can see just filtering down by people. It jumps along and follows people. I do have it zoomed in all the way right here. And so it probably doesn't see them when it goes around that bush. But of course, it's all going to be based on your particular install of this camera. Now for the Blue Iris people, you can come in here and the PTZ controls just automatically work. And it once you set your preset names, it'll even pull the names from the camera as well. And you can see you can move things around, you can zoom stuff, you can focus, etc. So you could control this straight from the Blue Iris app on your phone or whatever you may use on it. So you're not stuck with just having to use just their MVR if you don't want to. So that's a pretty cool different feature. And it just pulls straight in. So all you're doing is if you're going into Blue Iris is just put in your user ID, the IP address, password, hit find inspect. It pulls all the information automatically for you. And I just went in here and picked the substream is going to be the substream just so it's a little more efficient on your CPU time. But other than that, I didn't change anything else. Should you buy the damn thing? I would say at first, I didn't have high expectations going into it just because of, I don't know, some of the different things with the H2 S65 and what I was going to have issues with it playing with Blue Iris. And well, all that was fixed. And uh, the, the tracking, of course, didn't work too well, but they fixed it. And so all that's been done and it's all just works great. And actually I do enjoy where I have it on the front of the house where it sees a good bit of traffic of people. I'm probably going to move it over to the other corner to get it away from that bush. And I actually do like the white spotlight on it and it just follows people around. I never know when, Hey, someone comes goofing off around the house and it's 3 a.m. I'm not usually up to go track that person or everything and turn the lights on. Well, it'll do that itself. Track the person, follow them around. Hey, maybe it'll even run them off because they think it's a real person controlling that camera. So if you think this may fit in one of your different things and security cameras or whatnot, definitely do check it out. It's a pretty cool product. And especially if you are using those real link NVRs, it's kind of just plugs and play and does its thing. It's pretty awesome. So of course, the only negatives I can say about it really is I wish they would have had probably like a say a 10x zoom. That would have been pretty cool. 
I do wish we could have done an option to do H.264 if we would need to. Seems like that might be able to be fixed via software, but it's not a huge hang up at this time. And then lastly, I hope they get that bracket to mount under the eave, get that thing in stock because that's really where I want to mount it and under an eave without my little test board. So I appreciate Real Link sending this one, and I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers, YouTube subscribers. It definitely helps bring new products and things to the channel all the time. We do appreciate it. And y'all know the drill. Press some buttons, and y'all take care. The brakes work? No. Number three is the best. No, do the brakes work? No. Try them. It's a decent gear, dude. Oh, wow. I need to get... I need to get faster. Thank you.